You're welcome today. And today we want to talk about bilirubin bean formation. We want to see how bile pigments or what we call bilirubin bean formation are formed in our body. After red cells have been reached the senile stage, after 120 days average, we see destruction of red cells by the red children, the serial system. So we want to see how do this, what's the fate of these mature red cells, what we call bilirubin formation. And this bilirubin formation, we are saying it occurs in, in the reticular endothelial system. And this reticular endothelial system, that is the spleen, we have bone marrow and liver. So we see in this retinal endothelial system, that is the spleen, liver, and the bone marrow, see that these red cells are abysses after 120 days, they are destroyed. After 120 days, red cells and other heme, other heme containing compounds, other heme containing compounds like cytochrome, and the myoglobin, these compounds containing him, they are broken down after 120 days and within the reticular endothelial system, that is the spleen, liver, and the bone marrow. And what happens is that when they are destroyed, we see rays of him. The team. These red cells contain hemoglobin, and this hemoglobin is cleaved to globin, and oh, it is split to globin and him. And the globin which is formed in this reaction, this one we are seeing split into globin and him, and the globin which is formed is transported to the liver. In blood, it is transported in blood to the liver and is stored as amino acids. You see them being stored as amino acids. So that's the fate of globin. Then the heme which is formed in this retinal endothelial system, we see it being oxidized. Now it is split first. It is also split to form iron 2 ions and porphyrin ring. Form iron 2 ions and porphyrin ring. And this iron, which is always found at the center of the porphyrin ring, is transported in blood. We see it being transported in blood to the liver as ferritin. It is transported as ferritin and transferring. And after being transported as ferritin and transferring, it is stored in the river as hemosiderin. It is stored in the river in the form of hemosiderin. So that in case we need more red cells, we can reuse as God does not believe in wastage. So we see the amino acids are kept in the liver in the case we need more red cells, they are used. Even hemosiderin, this iron is kept as hemosiderin. So that when we need more red cells, the bone marrow can reuse this iron to ions. Then the porphyrin ring, which is left behind, is oxidized to blue green bilivadin. Bilivadin, which is blue green in color. It's blue green in color. And this oxidation reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme known as heme oxygenase. So we see heme oxygenase enzyme catalyzing the oxidation of porphyrin to be to blue green bilirubin. And this bilirubin that is formed is reduced to an conjugated bilirubin. 
unconjugated bilirubin and this unconjugated bilirubin is yellow in color you can call it unconjugated or you can call it indirect indirect bilirubin and this bilirubin is reduced to unconjugated by an enzyme and this enzyme is known as bilirubin reductase so we see bilirubin reductase enzyme catalyzing the reduction of bilirubin of blue green bilirubin to yellow and conjugated or indirect bilirubin and this bilirubin formed within the reticular endothelial cells as we said that all this process is occurring within the reticular endothelial cell system this is within the reticular endothelial cell these processes so this is my reticular endothelial system so we see this unconjugated bilirubin that is formed is toxic it is bound to albumin protein bound to albumin it is insoluble in water insoluble in water and it is cannot be found in urine can't be found in urine so this unconjugated or indirect bilirubin formed is toxic meaning it is very toxic to our body cell and if it accumulates especially in children and which is the brain it causes what you call connectedness and it is protein bound to albumin insoluble in water and because it is insoluble in water it cannot be found in urine so we shall see because this unconjugated bilirubin is insoluble and it is bound it is toxic it is transported to the liver it is this unconjugated bilirubin is transported to the liver and is transported bound to albumin why albumin because albumin is for self transportation we see this unconjugated bilirubin being swallowed or insisted by this albumin so that as it is being transported to the liver it does not destroy the surrounding cells so this bilirubin formed is transported to the liver bound to albumin so when we reach in the liver we find our indirect bilirubin in the liver hepatocytes so if i can enlarge it this side i'm going to see indirect bilirubin or an conjugated bilirubin this is indirect or you can call it an conjugated bilirubin in the liver hepatocytes in the liver hepatocytes the indirect bilirubin we add two molecules of glucuronic acid two molecules of glucuronic acid and within the liver hepatocyte there is an enzyme known as UDP glucuronosyl transferase let me put it in red UDP glucuronosyl glucuronosyl transferase is an enzyme this glucuronosyl transferase enzyme is found in the liver hepatocytes and is the one responsible for adding the two molecules of glucuronic acid on indirect bilirubin to form direct bilirubin form direct bilirubin so what form what conjugates this and conjugated bilirubin is that in presence of udp glucuronosyl transferase udp is uridine dis diphosphate it is a high energy compound which enables this glucuronosyl transferase to add two molecules of glucuronic acid to indirect bilirubin to form direct bilirubin or you can call it bilirubin dichloride diglucuronide you can call it that and this direct bilirubin formed for it it is non toxic this indirect bilirubin is non toxic it is soluble in water 
soluble in water it can be found in urine and it is not protein bound not bound to protein it is not protein bound because when albumin brings this bilirubin into the liver it goes back it puts it in the liver then it goes back to pick another so we find that this direct bilirubin is not protein bound it can be found in urine soluble in water that's why it is found in urine and it is non toxic so the importance of conjugation is to render or to convert the toxic bilirubin into non toxic form for is the excretion so we are going to see that this direct bilirubin which is found which is formed in the liver this liver has different what we call liver or biliary canaliculars which join into this duct so it will pass through the bile canaliculi bile canaliculi and when it passes through bile canaliculi it goes to the gall bladder it goes to the gall bladder and we see this bilirubin being in the gall bladder it goes to the gall bladder which is this this is the gall bladder when it reaches in the gall bladder it is for be to be concentrated whereby we add bile salts and acids together with the cholesterol we add bile salts and cholesterol in the gall bladder when it has passed by the bile canalicula it goes to the gall bladder where it is concentrated so it is concentrated in the gall bladder by addition of bile salts and cholesterol as we know that cholesterol is also excreted via bile so this from the gall bladder this bilirubin in the gall bladder moves from the gall bladder via the cystic duct it goes into the common bile duct and from the common bile duct it moves into the duodenum via the bile duct so we are seeing this direct bilirubin after being concentrated it moves via the bile the bile duct via the bile duct to the duodenum because the duodenum which is the first part of the small intestine so we see that this direct bilirubin via bile canaliculi to the gall bladder to be concentrated and then from the gall bladder moves via the bile duct to the duodenum and within the duodenum in the duodenum this direct bilirubin is converted to a colorless substance known as urobilinogen and this conversion is catalyzed by intestinal bacteria intestinal bacteria like e coli which are the normal floras in the git they catalyze or they convert yellow direct bilirubin to urobilinogen which is colorless this one is yellow this one is colorless is somehow colorless but this urobilinogen which is formed in the intestines the 99% of this urobilinogen 99% of urobilinogen is converted to stachobilinogen converted to stachobilinogen and is excreted in feces or in stool as stachobilin and it is this stachobilin that gives stool brown color gives it brown so when it is oxidized it is converted to stachobilin which gives stool the brown color that is 99% of this urobilinogen that is formed within the duodenum in the 1% the remaining 1% it undergoes it goes back to the liver it goes to the liver and some it can come back then from the liver this one goes to the kidney 
And within the kidney, it is excreted as it is excreted as urobilinogen. And when exposed to the air, to the surrounding air for the delay is converted to urobile. And this urobilinogen is the one that gives urine a pale yellow color. It's the one that gives urine a pale yellow color. That's why normal urine is pale yellow in color because of urobilinogen. And this one is what marks the end of bilirubin formation because it was bilirubin formation and excretion. We form the bilirubin and we see how it's excreted from the body. Whereby we have seen that after 120 days, within the reticular endothelial system, that is screen, bone marrow and liver, we see red cells and other hemocontaining compounds being broken down within these reticular endothelial cells. Whereby hemoglobin is split to globin and him, then globin is stored as amino acid in the liver for reuse. And then the him formed is split to porphyrin and iron. Iron is transported in the blood bound to ferritin and transferrin and is stored in the liver as hemosiderate. That in case we want to form more red cells, we can reuse. Then we have seen that this porphyrin is oxidized to be delivered in by hemoxygenase. Please never forget these enzymes. These two enzymes, when we are marking, we still normally even give them many marks. So hemoxygenase is the one that converts or oxidizes porphyrin to be delivered in. Then the delivered in is reduced by delivered in reductase to indirect or unconjugated bilirubin. And when you give the characteristics of this indirect bilirubin that is toxic, albumin bound, insoluble in water and cannot be found in urine. Then we have seen because it is toxic, it is transported bound to albumin for safe transportation to the liver. Where indirect bilirubin in the liver, we add two molecules of glucronic acid in the presence of UDP glucronoside transferase to form a direct bilirubin, which is non-toxic, soluble in water, found in urine and not protein bound. And this direct bilirubin, after conjugating it in the liver hepatocytes, it passes via the bile canalicula, which are like the gutters, into, and then it goes into the gallbladder where we add the bile salts and the cholesterol to be concentrated. And this, after being concentrated, passes through the bile duct into the duodenum. And in the duodenum, as we have seen, being part of the small intestine, we find there intestinal bacteria like E. coli, which converts the direct bilirubin to urobilinogen. And then 99 has tacobilinogen, then 1% taken back to the liver and then to the kidney and is excreted as urobilinogen. That is bilirubin formation and excretion. Thank you so much for listening. From the beginning until the end, we appreciate your support and always being there for us at Mhumuz and Aftali, medical sciences .com. Thank you so much. The next video we shall talk about different types of journeys. Thank you.